Hi guys, welcome to the course. The course contains top 50 tabular interview questions with detailed explanation. Before starting, I'll quickly introduce myself. I am Kirti Mathur. I am in IT for more than 10 years, worked in multiple skills and in different MNCs. The course contains all basic intermediate advanced and scenario based questions, followed by interview tips and uh, some uh, SQL FAQs. It is for all those who are preparing for W interviews, beginners as well as experienced. You can take notes, pause the video, try to understand the concept of each question. So now let's begin the course. Well, let's start with basic questions first. What is data visualization? What are its benefits? Data visualization is a graphical way of representing information by charts, graphs, maps, etc. to help organization to understand their data and make decisions. There are many benefits of data visualization. I am listing down some. So, the first benefit is discover insight. As we all know, human minds process visuals, images much faster than text. So, the complex information through data visualization appear more digestible easily understandable interpretable so for uh, for example from a dashboard organization can easily find what all products are not making profit to them from how long and uh, from which regions and so on another benefit is detect patterns trends understand the correlation between variables so i'll show you one example this is the text table which contains category furniture, office supplies, and technology. We are showing this data uh, year wise for all quarters, and these are the sum of sales for each quarter. So, by just by looking at this data, it is difficult to detect any uh, patterns or see the trend of sales. But if we move to stack bar chart of the same data, it is easy to detect a pattern like. For almost all my years in Q4, sales are increasing. Another benefit is trends. It is difficult to see any trend from a uh, text table, but just by looking at this graph, one can easily interpret sales for furniture are increasing with time. Another benefit is correlation. So, correlation is association between two metrics. How value of one metric will affect the another. This is the scatter plot of uh, sum of sales and profit. So two questions answers like uh, higher the sale in the state, higher is the profit. So by analyzing this chart, one can easily answer that uh, th is this the case. Another benefit is improved decision making. So now I'm sure you can also uh, say how helpful data visualization is for organization to make improved decisions. Next question, why should one choose Tableau over other available BI tool? So this is Gartner's magic quadrant. Um, here you can see Tableau is uh, in the leader's place and it is from last many years. All our uh, the BI tools, available BI tools in the market. So it is the comparison. Okay, now coming to Tableau, it is easy to create interactive visuals from Tableau. The drag and drop functionality of Tableau is incredible. You can connect to multiple data sources like almost all data sources like Excel, Spreadsheet, SQL, Cloud Hosted Data Sources, Server Based. You can integrate uh, R and Python with the W dashboards for detail analysis. You can publish and share uh, dashboards with end users easily and uh, can also embed your dashboards in a web page. It is mobile friendly. The end users can access the dashboard from their mobiles as well. So these are some of the benefits of Tableau over other available BI tools. Next question, how many Tableau products are available and what are they? So to develop dashboards by connecting with data sources, two products are available, Tableau Desktop and Tableau Desktop Public. Tableau Desktop is, uh, you require a license to create dashboards. It is free for only 14 days as a trial. It is a secure product. Whereas Tableau Desktop Public, it is a free product the difference between Tableau Desktop and Tableau Desktop Public is with Public, you can connect to limited data sources like you cannot uh, connect to cloud hosted data sources, servers, etc. As it is public, so your data content will also be public. It is not secure. 
Also, you cannot save uh, uh, your dashboards locally on your systems and the amount of data injection in Tableau public is also limited. It is like 10 million rows per source. Now coming to server products, three products are there, Tableau Server, Tableau Online and Tableau Public. Tableau Server, you can publish securely dashboards here and share with the end user. Tableau Online, similar to Tableau Server, you can publish and share dashboards with end user. But the difference uh, is uh, in Tableau Online, it is fully hosted in cloud. And as it is on cloud, it allows to skip activities like uh, hardware installation, maintenance of server, etc. Now, Tableau Public. Dashboards can be published to Tableau uh, Public, but the content will be public and can be accessed by anyone. Now, there are two products to view dashboards for free, Tableau Reader and Tableau Mobile. Tableau Reader, a free desktop app which allows to view and interact with dashboards. Tableau Mobile, a free mobile app which allows to view dashboards which are published on Tableau Server or Tableau Online. Now for preparation of uh, data, there is uh, one Tableau product which is Tableau Prep Builder. It is like ETL tool which prepares your data for analysis. The interviewer may ask questions like difference between Tableau Desktop and Tableau Public or Tableau Server and Tableau Online or Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server or just questions like what is Tableau Reader or limitations of Tableau Public. So please prepare that as well. Another common and important question, what are dimensions and measures in Tableau? Dimensions are nothing but all the fields containing uh, qualitative and categorical information. Tableau treats them as dimension. Example, customer name, segment, city, country, products, etc. are all dimensions. Whereas measures? Tableau treats any fields, attributes containing quantitative information, numeric information as measures that can be aggregated in some way like sum, average, minimum, maximum, etc. For example, sum of sales, average of discount, minimum of quantities, maximum of quantities and so on. Now if we see in Tableau, all these category, customer name, location, IDs, dates, these are all dimensions. Such kind of attributes are dimension, whereas discount, profit, quantity, sales, such kind of attributes are measures, as these can be aggregated. Based on the requirement, you can convert a measure into a dimension as well, or a dimension into a measure as well. I hope dimensions and measures are now clear to you all. Next question. What is difference between .twb and .twpx? What are the file extensions available in Tableau? So there are many file extensions available. We'll see one, one by one. So first one is .twb which is Tableau workbook. The other one is .twpx which is Tableau packaged workbook. So Tableau workbook is the workbook which contains all the information of your worksheets and dashboard. By information, I mean all the views which we have created, any metadata created, data source information, everything. But it doesn't contain the data with the workbook. So we share these type of files with the colleagues or clients who have access to the data source. Whereas TWBX, Tableau Packaged Workbook, it is a zip file which contains uh, your Tableau workbook and the underlying extracted data images. We share this type of files with colleagues or clients who do not have access to the data source or are not connected to the network. Next is TDE or hyperfile format which is Tableau data extract. So extract files are nothing but local copy of a subset of entire data set. It doesn't contain any dashboards, worksheets, any visits. It only shares the underlying data. So instead of TDE from 10.5 uh, version onwards, uh, we use hyperfile format. So it allows to create large extract which contains billions of data. It refreshes large data sets as well. Next is TDS, which is Tableau data source. So these files enables to quickly connect to the data source. 
they do not contain the actual data but contains all the necessary information to connect to the data source and any modifications which we have made like uh, if you have changed the default properties created any calculated fields groups cells next is tdsx which is tableau package data source so it is a zip file which contains data source file uh, that is tds um, basically it contains the connection strings and the local file data which is the uh, extracted data please note tds and tdsx don't include any worksheets or dashboards the advantage of sharing tableau package data source file is as the data is packaged the recipient can use it offline so the users who do not have access to the database we can share tdsx file with them so as it contains the data as well as the metadata information the another file extension is tbm which is tableau bookmark so bookmarks are nothing but a single sheet which you can save and that can be used by other users or you can use it in multiple workbooks so how you can create a bookmark is in tableau desktop you can click on window bookmark and create bookmark next is tbs which is tableau preferences so other than what tableau already offers we can create our own custom palette in tableau as well to use uh, consistent colors across our workbook the last file extension is tableau map source which is tms so when we plot a map in tableau it connects automatically to open street to load the relevant map in the background and maps are data points on it it is a default map but we can change it uh, uh, by adding our own wms server i'll quickly show you how to do that so now if i drag and drop state in detail you can see automatically map from open street is loaded but we can change it i will go to map background map add wms map now we can paste the url and click on ok now the map has changed what i'll do is i'll go to map background maps and again go to manage maps now i'll click on this and create export and if i save it you can see it just saved in file format tableau map source tms i should have changed the name from open street to some other name but the advantage is i hope you got the point if i again load drag and drop state into the detail the open street map has loaded but now if i want to change it i'll just have to go to ma background maps and click on the new one so this map is now loaded so these are the file extensions in tableau the interviewer may ask uh, some questions like how can we create custom palette in tableau how can one change default map which is open street to some other map what is the use of twb and twbx or uh, does tds or tdsx contain sheets or dashboards or difference uh, between any file extensions i hope you will be able to now answer these questions next question what is live connection and extract connection so how things work in tableau is uh, we use drag and drop but in the backend queries are getting executed so what live connection is live connection queries directly to the data source whereas in extract connection tableau first create the snapshot of data td file and the queries are uh, getting executed on that data the advantage of using extract connection is it increase performance because in live connection insertion deletion may happen so it will degrade the performance also it enables to work offline now the disadvantage of using extract connection is we don't have the updated views until we refresh our data so then only we can have the updated views with us now from where you can uh, enable the live and extract option is in the data source pane on top right you will see connection if you click on live then uh, you will have live connection if you click, click on extract you will have extract connection now coming to next question data types available in tableau so there are seven data types number decimal floating numbers number whole integer numbers string boolean true and false uh, values date 
date and time and geographical values next question how can we change default data type in tableau so there are three ways to do it first you can change the data type from the data source tab the next one is from the data pane or third you can create a calculated field to change the data type so we'll see this in tableau how to change it this is the data source tab so as you can see hash here we'll click on this so this abc represents a string hash represent numeric so i'll click on this so this is number whole as a data type but i want to change it to number decimal so very easy we'll just click on decimal number the data type is changed now we want if we want to verify we can verify it by just clicking on this and seeing that uh, uh, it is ticked on number decimal now if i want to change the data uh, type from the data pane what i'll do is i'll go to the attribute then go to change data type and now i want to change it back to number whole so just click on this again if you want to verify we'll just verify it by going to the change dimension and seeing that it is marked to number whole now the next way is to change the data type by creating a calculated field so i'll quickly create a calculated field i'll give it a name float quantity just write float quantity and click on ok So as you can see, a new attribute has created a new calculated field, which is of floating quantity. We can check uh, uh, the data type here. It is of number decimal. So with any of these three ways, you can change the data type in Tableau. Next question, very, very important question. How many filters are in Tableau and in which order they execute? So filters are nothing but it restricts the unnecessary information to focus on only the relevant information. So the order in which they execute and uh, the filters are extract filter, data source filter, context filter, dimension filter and measure filter. So what is extract filter? We'll see this in W. This is data source tab. In the top right you can see live and extract connection. If I enable extract connection and click on edit. This will open the filter window. Okay, so now I am interested in only category, which is furniture. What I'll do is I'll create, I'll click on this furniture. So this will create a data set of furniture. Or if I'm interested in only top thousand rows, I'll click thousand and click OK. So after the extract, I'll have the data set which contains only this much of data. As for my dashboards, I'm interested only uh, for furniture categories and top thousand rows. Now, data source filter. In data source tab on top right, you'll see this one. This is the data source filter. Okay. So similarly, you can add the uh, category furniture from here as well, or you can apply any uh, condition or if you are interested in uh, some top uh, customers only, you can apply that uh, condition, that top 10, top 20 uh, filter here as well. Both extract and data source filters are independent. Next is context filter. So when we apply a context filter, what W do is it creates a temporary table and other filters are applied on top of this context filter. So suppose uh, if uh, I have a requirement to create uh, a dashboards on only two countries, USA and India. So what I'll do is I'll create a context filter of uh, countries, USA and India and uh, uh, create my dashboards on top of it. How this will help is, if we don't change it frequently, it will help to increase the performance of the dashboard. How to create context filter is, um, so if I'm interested only state uh, uh, California and Florida, I'll select these and click on OK. Now this will create a normal dimension filter, but if I click on add to context, 
it will create a context filter. It can be identified by gray color. Now dimension filter and measure filter. You can drag and drop uh, dimensions to the filter pane and uh, this way you can create a dimension filter. Similarly, by, it, uh, by dragging and dropping the measures to the filter pane, you will create a measure filter. Now to add a dimension filter, uh, suppose I'm interested in only accessories, appliances and arts. Okay, so I'll click on all these, click on OK. So I'll have only accessories, appliances and art. There are a few more options. So if I click on wildcard, suppose I'm interested in subcategories that starts with A, like uh, accessories, appliances and art. Then this way also I can uh, enable this filter. Also, I can apply any condition like uh, all the subcategories uh, where sum of sales is greater than 20k and click on OK, then I will have all the subcategories which are greater than 20k. Or if I want all uh, um, the top uh, 5, suppose, subcategories by sum of sales, then I can uh, add this condition as well and click on OK, then I will only have uh, subcategories which are greater than top 5 subcategories basically. Now coming to measures filter, um, so for example sales, if I drag and drop to filter panes, by default it will ask for aggregation that you want to add sum of sales, average of sales, median etc. Default is sum. Next option is, uh, it will give the range of values at least at most special. So if I click on range of value and click on OK and click on show filter, this will give me the range. Now for at least, uh, if I'm interested in suppose at least 20k, okay, so this these are the subcategories um, which have ma uh, minimum sales of 20k. Similarly, we can apply for at most filter and for special as well. So what is special is like you want to include all values or null values or non-null values. We have included all values. Click on OK. Then we'll have all the subcategories accordingly. Next question. How many tables can be joined in Tableau? So in Tableau maximum 32 tables can be joined. Next question. What is the difference between Tableau worksheet, dashboard, story and a workbook? So worksheet is where you build your views. Dashboard, so you consolidated all your worksheet to create a dashboard that displays some information. Story, so it is a sequence of your worksheets and a dashboard that conveys a story. And a workbook, a workbook can contain only worksheets, dashboards or story or all of them. Next question, what refresh types are available in Tableau? So we have full refresh and incremental refresh. Full refresh, it refreshes all your data. Whereas incremental refresh, it only adds new rows since the last refresh. So for example, we have a sales data, uh, a sales table basically, uh, in which every day new rows get added, new records get added. So instead of uh, doing full refresh, we can do incremental refresh. We just have to specify column that identifies new rows are added. It can be ID or a date field, whatever uh, depends on your table. So how can you do full refresh? You can just right click uh, on your data source and uh, just click on this refresh. Or you can go to data source and just click on refresh data source. This will refresh your data. And for incremental refresh, you first have to extract your data as live connection only, always uh, show the updated data. So in extract, click on edit, click on incremental refresh, specify the column, we'll specify the table here and then the column which identifies new rows are added and then just click on OK. So now when you refresh your uh, dashboard data relevant to only new uh, order date will get added. 
लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ बेसिक कैटेगरी व्हाट इज एग्रीगेशन एंड डिसएग्रीगेशन ऑफ डेटा सो व्हाट एग्रीगेशन इज डिस्प्लेइंग मेजर्स एंड डायमेंशंस इन एग्रीगेटेड फॉर्म लाइक सम ऑफ सेल्स एवरेज ऑफ क्वांटिटीज काउंट ऑफ कस्टमर्स डिस्टिंक्ट काउंट ऑफ सब कैटेगरीज एंड सो ऑन सो दीस ऑल कम्स अंडर एग्रीगेशन वेयर इज डिसएग्रीगेशन मींस डिस्प्लेइंग ईच एंड एवरी डेटा फील्ड सेपरेटली in tableau default analysis is always aggregation but you can uncheck it to have the disaggregated view next question what is parameter parameters are nothing but it replaces constant values in calculations filters so for example there is a calculated uh, field which returns true when the score is above 80 otherwise false so with parameters we can replace this constant value 80 and can control it dynamically so this is one example we can use parameter with filters bins calculated fields reference lines i'll show you one example in w in this example we'll use parameter with filters so what i want is uh, i want to let my end users decide how they want to see subcategories by sales whether they want to see top 5 top 10 or top 15 Ah, uh, subcategories. So what we'll do is, uh, we'll drag and drop subcategories to filter. Go to top. Go to by field. Okay, now top. Instead of this constant value ten, what I want is I'll use parameter. So subcategories are seventeen. So I'll use fifteen as maximum number. Select. subcategories okay and then click on okay okay so now okay i have my parameter here what i'll do is i'll go to show parameter instead of slider i'll use type in now instead of 10 subcategories if i enter 5 i'll have top 5 subcategories if i'll have 15 i'll have top 15 subcategories by sales this is a common interview question also that how can we fetch top and uh, customers or uh, subcategories categories or any dimension members by any measure so now you know the way also instead of top we can uh, have bottom so we are using the same parameter and clicking on okay this will give results of bottom and subcategories so here it is 15 so bottom 15 subcategories by sales so the if i enter 5 i will have bottom 5 subcategories by sales you can sort the way you like so for bottom it's better to show this way how can we create parameter is by clicking on this drop down go to create parameter or if you want to create a parameter of any dimension will go to create and then click on parameter this window will open so you can name the parameter of your choice you can select the data type current value allowable like here is the list if you want to delete any of these sub categories you can do that or if you want to add any you can add that okay all will have all the values which the sub category holds range it is uh, mostly for the measures you can have the range of values and then click on okay so now we'll have the sub category parameter this way you can create a parameter also